So this week I was going to start playing around with the open source Pretendo network to see what it's like playing Wii U games online now that Nintendo has officially shut down the servers. However, I guess it's been a while since I connected my Wii U to the network as pretty quickly it prompted me for a network update which out of habit I absently accepted and then immediately questioned my decisions. Last thing, I tried to make ramen in the coffee pot and I broke everything. Thankfully this 5.5.6 update did not brick my already soft modded Wii U, but it did wipe out its effectiveness. For context, my Wii U was soft modded a few years ago using a version of a soft mod that used a method which relied on a copy of Brain Age for DS running on the Wii U that had been modified so that when it booted up it would auto load the soft mod, which is as janky as it sounds. <laughs> So suddenly I was the owner of a now homebrewless Wii and I decided to hop on good old Wii U hacks guide to see what the latest recommended soft mod method happened to be. And that's when I learned that something called Tiramisu had come and gone as the preferred soft mod method for the Wii U and its creators had now created something called Aroma, which everyone seems to be really hyped about. According to the guide, Aroma is an environment like Tiramisu, which can be booted through the environment loader, which first off, the environment loader is totally new to me, but it's cool to see that that's a new option for modders to have multiple flavors available on the same Wii U console. Aroma just like Tiramisu, it uses the same Mocha version, support for setup modules, and comes with the auto boot module, which includes the boot selector and quick start support. Aroma comes with several additional features, including a plugin system and a new way of launching homebrews. I also noted that Aroma doesn't allow running .elf and some .rpx applications because they just don't support the new features, but on the flip side, their new file format, WUHB files, are really cool because they can be run straight from the Wii U home menu, and they can also bundle in any needed assets to feel more unique and channel-like, such as icons and banner images and all that stuff. They used to be packed into some folder and you would maybe get that on a quarter of the applications you'd want to install. So after reading all this, I was sold to try out the new standard of Wii U soft modding and decided to leave my notes here to help speed anyone along who might want to do the same. If you're following along and your Wii U is already soft modded, I recommend going back to Wii U hacks.guide, finding your soft mod method of before and following the steps to reverse it. That way you don't accidentally get conflicting files or methods involved here. If your console is unmodded, you should be able to dive right in, but make sure to read the guide carefully for yourself as this will mostly reflect my experience with this soft mod. First, we're going to want to grab an SD card that's been formatted to FAT32 and pop it into our computer. Note that the guide specifically says not to call the SD card we use, which I definitely was doing before, so make sure you don't do that. Then we're going to go to the getting started with aroma section of the Wii U hacks guide and click next. After that, we're going to follow the link to the aroma site, click the four checkboxes to enable the download sections, and ensure environment loader, NAND dumper, and base aroma are all checked. If you want some bonus features, you can check out things like Blue Pair, which will let you pair Bluetooth controllers like a PS3 controller to the Wii U, and FTPU, which will make it easier to access your Wii U files from your computer later on. Once we've clicked all three of those download buttons, we're going to head back to the guide and follow the link to grab the payloader installer, and finally follow the link in the description to grab the WHB file for the Homebrew App Store, which we're going to want later on. Next, we're going to unzip each zip file one at a time, and you're going to want to copy each of those Wii U folders to the root of your SD card. Especially after the first time, you're going to get a pop-up for overriding the files if you're on Windows, which you're going to choose yes to, and if you're on Mac, it's going to ask if you want to merge the files and folders, and you're going to choose that merge option for each zip file. For the Homebrew App Store WHB file, copy that into the Wii U and Apps folder alongside the other WHB HP files on your SD card. Now we'll eject our SD card, pop it into the Wii U, and proceed to the next page of the guide, which will tell us to load up the Wii U's internet browser and head to Wii U exploit.xyz. We're going to hit the run exploit button in the middle and immediately hold the B button on the gamepad until we get a black screen that says, please choose your payload. If you don't get the screen or you get another screen, the guide is clear on what to do, but basically it just means try again. We'll then select the NAND dumper option and press A to launch it. You can accept the defaults or modify them as you like and press A to begin the backup process. What this is doing is backing up the essentially core files of your Wii U to the SD card that we can copy them somewhere safe and in case of catastrophe you should be able to restore your Wii U to the state it's currently in. So when that's done make sure you power off your Wii U, grab the SD card, put it in your PC and then copy those files that it just created which are specifically listed on the NAND backup page of the Wii U hacks guide. Put those somewhere safe like a Google Drive and then you can rest easier knowing those are somewhere safe. While our SD card is back on our computer there's one more file we're going to add which is called 01 underscore sig patches dot rpx. We can get that from the tiramisu section of the wii u hacks guide then paste it in the wii u then environment aroma modules 
and then setup folder on our SD card. I had to go digging for this step as I wasn't able to install updates from Nintendo for a game like Smash Bros, which knew it needed an update, but couldn't download that update. And then because I didn't have the SIG patcher installed, it wasn't able to sideload the updates either. So the only way to play Smash Bros on my Wii anymore was to add this file and then sideload the update patch. So definitely recommend this step. Now we can pop the SD card back into the Wii U, boot it up and rerun the browser exploit, but this time holding X right away until we see the environment loader menu. From there, we'll press A to launch the aroma environment, press A past the red warning screen, which is normal. We're gonna block updates later like it recommends. Press A to launch the Wii menu and then open the new payloader installer app on our home screen. Press A once that's loaded up, then press A again to select install slash update, then install. Press A one more time to shut down the console. Now we can boot Aroma by launching the health and safety app, which it's taken over, and we'll do that right now. But it would be nice if our Wii U would just auto boot into the soft modded Aroma environment by default. To set that up, we'll press A to launch Aroma, and then press A to launch the Wii menu, then open up the payload loader installer again. We'll press A to select check, then choose boot options, and we'll press A to select switch to payload loader, then A to shut down the console. So now the payload loader will be launched every time the console boots. To complete the auto boot setup for Aroma, we're gonna turn our Wii U back on and see the environment loader. Hover over Aroma, and we're gonna press Y to make it our default, then A to launch it, and after that we'll hover over the Wii U menu and press Y to make it our default again, then A to launch it. If we ever wanna boot back into the environment loader, we can just boot up the console while holding the X button on the gamepad, and if we wanna load into Aroma specifically, we can hold the plus button or start button while the console's booting. And congrats, your Wii U is now soft modded and will automatically boot into that soft mod every time it starts up. We have a couple more things we're going to want to do so you can get the most out of your now soft modded Wii U. First, we'll open up the Homebrew App Store and search for an app called UFDIINE WUHB. Those are two different acronyms, words. Sorry, it's a mouthful. We're going to go ahead and install that. And then we're also going to grab the Aroma compatible version of the WUP installer, that's W U P, so that we can sideload those patches and DLC and all the stuff that's now unavailable because the eShop is shut down. Then we're gonna close the Homebrew App Store with the minus button, open UFD IINE, and press A on the Wii U gamepad to delete the update folder. This effectively blocks Nintendo from pushing a surprise update to our Wii U, which could do something unexpected and potentially unwanted to it. Then you can exit UFD IINE, and from there I'm gonna hop into the WEP installer and install the update files for Smash Bros, which as previously mentioned, I could not do. There's a whole lot more you can do with your now soft modded Wii U. You can restore archived eShop content you may have lost, play homebrew from the homebrew app store, emulate and play pretty much all Nintendo consoles up to and including the GameCube, Wii, and of course, the Wii U, and more. I'll be releasing a video soon covering all the ways you can connect your Wii U and 3DS to the Pretendo network so you can play your games online again, so make sure you subscribe to catch that one soon. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want to see related to Wii U hacks or really anything console mod hack related. Appreciate y'all and we'll see you next week.